talk about this thing. What's up guys, in this video, I just wanna to talk to you about our experience with our Thunder over like the last six months. So in this video, I don't want to cover the technical specs of the machine necessarily compared to others because there's just so many different directions you can take that video. What I wanna tell you about is our experience with the machine because for me, that was more valuable what someone else experienced working with the machine day to day, working with customer support. When you're paying this kind of price tag for something, you know that you're probably getting a decent machine. Uh, for me, it was more about uh, what is the follow-up to buying the, the expensive thing. <laughs> okay, so the first question is, why did we go with Thunder? So like we've said in other videos, we had a Glowforge first, then an Omtech, then another Omtech, and now we have the Thunder Nova 63. Obviously, whenever you're gonna make this kind of jump, there's a lot of very expensive and honestly all of them are great options so why did we go with thunder so last year when christmas was well on its way and um we kind of made a few uh, i guess strategic uh, predictions of what was likely about to happen with christmas when we looked at what we wanted to be able to do and what we expected to do basically when we were just looking ahead it became pretty obvious that we were not going to be able to keep up at all with just our own techs. Now, one thing about that is we had to make a very quick decision. So that did influence our decision to go with the Thunder, but I'm not really saying that's a bad thing. So Christmas is on its way. We knew we needed a bigger machine. So we started looking around. We looked at uh, Eon, we looked at Boss, we looked at Thunder, we, when we looked at the uh, bigger Omtex as well. So of course, Omtech was pretty high on our list because we already had experience. We have two of them over there. So obviously Omtech was pretty high on our list because we already had a good deal of experience with Omtech. So that was up there. Uh, Eon, we knew was just very reputable. Uh, it's all over you know, YouTube and there's tons of, uh, I guess, you know, whatever, influencers um, pushing Eon right now and you know, we just heard a lot about it over the, over the last few years. We knew that it was a quality machine. Because of the internet robots and targeting ads, I had been getting a lot of ads for Boss Laser. So really at buying this level of, of a machine, there was, I guess, three things that stood out as important in our minds because we knew that we were gonna be getting decent machines. Like We knew that it was gonna be quality stuff really with any of those brands at that level of a purchase. So. What are those? So I would say number one was we needed it to get here quick. Honestly, that may not be spending this much money. That may not be the best uh, gauge of whether you should buy something or not. But the truth is we needed it for keeping up with demand and knowing what we were going to be able to do with our business. So we needed it to get here quick. So then once we got it here, we needed it up and running pretty quick. And to be honest, with our own techs in the past, it's usually been a lot of setup and Candidly, we needed it to we needed to hit the ground running quick. So then number three, and then number three, we really wanted good support. I don't want to go on record and say that Omtech has bad support, but we wanted some US-based support. We wanted to be able to get someone on the phone very quickly if needed and have a have a good conversation. We didn't want to be waiting on online support. So I, I don't want to sound any kind of way with that, but the truth is we really wanted US-based support. And you know, my understanding is Boss has that, Eon has that, and Thunder does. Omtech might at this point, but I, I haven't had to contact support in quite a while. I, I don't know what their support system is like, but when I've contacted in the past, rather than talking to a support person, you basically just end up getting a better answer going to Facebook and posting in a group. And there's nothing wrong with that, but I wanted someone that I had handed money over to to give me an answer back. You know, at this level, I just really wanted... Uh, good support. So with those three things out of the way, why did we go with Thunder? So at the time, I don't remember exactly what it was, but when we were looking, it was going to be months out to get an Eon. And so that immediately threw it out of the running if we were going to get it for that season. It wouldn't have gotten here until after the new year. So that immediately threw Eon out. And I'm not saying that Thunder's better than Eon. I'm saying this is what we needed. So then that left us with, you know, Boss, Omtech, and Thunder. Well, like I've already said a few times, Omtech, I'm not against buying another Omtech at this point. I'll tell you our experience with getting this Thunder versus our two previous Omtechs. 
The Thunder, like we said in our Glowforge video, probably the biggest pro of a Glowforge, in my opinion, is the fact that it is just ready to go out of the box. This thing here, as big as it is and as <laughs> industrial or whatever as it is, it was just ready to go. I didn't have to do like any setup outside of, you know, your obviously hooking up the basics or whatever, but like doing any tweaking inside the machine, I didn't have to do any of that. Mirrors were aligned. Everything was just good to go. And so I was shocked about that even with uh, expecting a good product and expecting it to get here in you know good shape it was just ready to go so that was amazing to me um, because even when I went and helped them set up their umtake down at the university it needed some tweaking and I, I, I don't know why that is I, I just I don't know quality control I don't, I don't know but that was one big difference that I've noticed is that it is very much I mean obviously you got to plug your chiller and your exhaust and all those things you got to run the stuff but as far as tweaking the insides of the machines, my experience was that it was ready to go and that I didn't have to do any of that. I mean, everything was just dead on, so that was amazing. So then, like I said about support, we knew that Thunder had good US-based support, and from what I've gathered about Boss, they do too, so those things sort of took Omtech um out of the running. At, the, at this point, we were prepared and ready to pay the extra on top to have those things over the Umtech. And again, full transparency here, I'm not against buying an Umtech again in the future. Uh, it's what we needed for this time and at that time. So past all that, really the thing that settled it then between Boss and Thunder for us, all things being equal, honestly, we just knew more about Thunder and I'm not saying it's more reputable, I'm not saying it's better, I'm not saying any of those things. For us, when we kind of aligned all of those things that we were looking for, we just thought that the Thunder was a better suit for our needs at this time. So that's why we went with it. So those are kind of the basics of why we chose the Thunder. And to be honest, I don't have any legitimate cons at this point. I absolutely love it. And if I was willing and able to spend that money again, I would have two of them or three of them sitting here. Uh, you know, maybe one day, but not right now, but I would do it again. So now I'll tell you the things that might be considered cons. I'm not gonna say the, that they are cons, but I'm gonna say the, negatives of our experience so far. So first, this thing obviously can't fit on a mail truck. Um, it was sort of a headache to get here. Obviously, we have the Nova 63. It's the biggest one they offer. So you know it's not gonna be easy. And you saw me walk through that door over there. We had to get it through that door, so that was fun. Um, I was beginning to think that we were gonna have to put a laser-shaped hole in the wall uh, to get it here. But um, again, talking about their awesome support, uh, I looked online, I, we, we researched the fact of, can we even get it in the building? And I found online a guide where, yes, they say it can fit through a standard doorway. And so I thought, all right, we'll go with it and we'll trust them. Uh, so I also on top of that, just being totally safe with it, I called support and immediately we got someone on the phone. And she was super helpful, so kind, and told us exactly how we would need to do it, everything we would need to do it, and all that. So. Right out of the gate, I was impressed with their support. So we got off on the on the right foot there. The reason I say it was difficult to get here, it wasn't even Thunder's fault necessarily. It was uh, having to go back and forth with the shipping company because basically once it left their door, um, I was having to talk to uh, you know the different shipping companies that it was coming through. And I expected this, so this wasn't a surprise, but the delivery people, they wouldn't deliver it. Um, basically, it got to the terminal about an hour from us, and they called and basically said, we can't put this on a truck, it won't fit on our lift gate, you know, and we were sort of, we, we were warned of that earlier on, so that wasn't a surprise, um, but it did mean that we had to figure things out in the moment, because we were trying to plan ahead, but it wasn't so cut and dry of where we would kind of have a uh, issues along the way, if that makes sense. So to get it here, we ended up hiring a local moving company that one of our friends owns so that, honestly, we were able to have a, a personal contact there, know that, okay, he's gonna take care of this for us. And also, I don't wanna speak for Thunder because they may change and don't, don't tell them Jake sent you with this, but at the time of filming this video, Thunder would reimburse you up to a certain amount for the, any extra shipping costs that you have to do like that, like hiring a moving company, a towing company, whatever it is you end up needing to do. So 
we were able to work things out there and uh, do a little negotiating with him and all that so that we were able to get it here safely. So I said safely. Uh, he calls us at the terminal and he starts sending me pictures and basically the top of our crate is caved in and it was damaged. I will say having a friend there that was able to say, I haven't touched it yet, it's damaged, uh, and, and take a bunch of pictures for us was helpful so that, you know, no one could be pointing fingers and placing blame on each other. It, so it was damaged but when it got to us. Now, the night that we moved in, we had basically every one of our friends that is savvy with tools or whatever here helping us, all of our big boys, uh, to come help us pick up this heavy thing. We didn't ever even settle anything with Thunder, to be honest. It just wasn't worth it for us because nothing was damaged that would mess with their machine running. So we were able to just brace it up and get it fixed that night, and we didn't worry about it. It did add just a little bit of a level of stress in the middle of all that. So we get the machine here and it was extremely difficult to get in the building, but we did get it here with a lot of uh, <laughs> exhaustion, but we made it happen. Again, so I wouldn't, like I said, I wouldn't even call that negatives about the Thunder itself. It was just a very difficult process to get here at times, but that was to be expected. This thing in the crate was something like 1400 pounds. So it ended up taking eight dudes in here to get it unboxed through the door and back into place. So it was a tough process, but we made it happen. So then as far as running the machine, you know, basically, like I said, we got it in here and it was up and running very quickly, very quickly. Even with the experience with our other Umtex, when we moved into this shop and we had to put those on trailers and uh, get them into here, it took me like a full weekend to get them back aligned and ready to go. This thing was up and running in like a, no time. It, it took no time. Camera and everything. It was amazing. So that was great. As far as running the machine, I only have one complaint so far, and I've talked with support here and there, and to be honest, I haven't put much time into getting it figured out. There's been like one issue with scoring quickly that I'll throw some B-roll up here so you can see the difference, uh, where I'll get a few squiggly lines sometimes, and it hasn't been anything that has been detrimental to us yet. So I haven't put as much time as I possibly should have into fixing it. It hasn't been like the biggest deal at this point. So I mean, really I only have that one issue with running it. Otherwise, I absolutely love the thing. We have gone ahead and upgraded to the uh, four inch uh, laser head so that we can easily do half inch birch plywood. I mean, it, it cuts through like butter on there. I mean, you have to slow it down a little bit, but the cuts are so clean. Uh, we haven't upgraded the air assist. We haven't upgraded anything on it yet other than adding on that four inch laser head for doing thicker material. We just use the stock air assist. We use the stock everything at this point. One thing I do love about the machine is that it has the, uh, the dual air assist settings so that we can have two different settings. We've upgraded our air assist on the Omtex just to an air compressor, but it's just always on at the same pressure. That's what I love about this is we're able to get such clean cuts and engraves uh, or scores a lot of times without even masking. It's amazing. Uh, so that's saving us money on masking. Uh, we still do masks sometimes. A lot of times I'll just use the, uh, I believe it's the six millimeter uh, nozzle uh, for engraves and then I'll swap it out to the, uh, whatever it is, the two millimeter uh, for uh, cutting. It's, and that gets us a super clean product uh, without having to mask, without having to do even a bunch of sanding. So for running it, the fact that we can run so much faster, get so much more on the bed at a time so we can set it, let it run for two hours if needed or whatever, and then go and run the other machines has saved us so much time uh, over the machine. After we decided on Thunder, we knew we wanted one of the bigger Novas. And honestly, the price discrepancy or whatever, once you get to the top end, we just said, we're just gonna go ahead and go all in and get the big one so that we can do so much more at a time, we can cut bigger signs, we can cut uh, bigger and thicker material with 130 watt. It was just worth it for us. So that's why we went with the bigger uh, machine because we knew we were going all in on this and we knew that we were gonna be using it. And we have, you know, it, you might not need this this big of a machine. And it, basically everything I'm saying about the way it runs would apply to the other Novas, I would assume. And that's another thing. We're able to run it just so much faster in general. So we get more on the bed, like way more on the bed at a time. 
and we're able to run our engraves uh, and our cuts so much faster than our other machines. So we just get more going at a time because we're also not having to load and unload the machine constantly. So that has been amazing and a game changer for us of just volume. A lot of times it's not even been necessarily that we have to do bigger pieces. Yes, we do bigger signs, but it's been the fact that we're not having to have our head in the machine so much during the day. So that's our experience with the Nova 63 so far. I hope this is helpful. Like I said, it, we're not getting super technical in this video. I just wanted you to know what our experience has been like because a lot of times I feel like that's more valuable. Like you know this thing is gonna be good, but what is it like day to day? And I can tell you at this point, absolutely love it. And if I was in the place where we were going to spend that kind of money right now, we would do it again. It's been amazing. So I honestly can't recommend Thunder highly enough. They have been so good to work with from day one, uh, and we've gotten an amazing machine to work with. So again, I can't recommend it enough. So if you're on the fence about Thunder, I, I can't, like I say, I can't speak for you and your experience with other machines, but if you're on the fence about just Thunder right now, I, I mean, I wouldn't even hesitate at this point. So that's that's where we're at. If you're making this decision right now, I hope this has helped you. Uh, so yeah, like, subscribe. Thanks for uh, hanging out this long. I know this is a sort of a rambly video, but thanks for hanging out with me. Again, if you're new to the laser world and you're just kind of trying to figure this whole thing out and you need some help sourcing your materials, we have a, materi a free material shopping list for you down there that we've put together. This is who we bought from for years. So that link is in the description. I hope it helps you, uh, you know, source some materials because it's it was not easy for us in the beginning but this these are some of the places that we bought from over the years that have been reliable and we've gotten some good materials from so check that out it's in the description so yeah we'll see you guys in the next one bye